All right, so here we are. Okay, so we are going to understand the safe GCD algorithm used in the SCCP 26K1 library to find the GCD. Okay, of course, we are not going to stop at finding the GCD. We need to find the multiplicative inverse, right? So I'll try my best. So this algorithm comes from this paper. Okay, fast constant time GCD computation and modular inversion proposed by Daniel Bernstein and Bo Yin Yang. Okay, so you can, I mean, as a true Bitcoiner, you want to understand all the fundamentals. If you want to understand the code implementation deeper, you should consider reading and trying to understand this paper. Okay. And there is even this uh, MD file in the library, in the documentation. Okay, but they, but they, they, they take extreme efforts to help anyone understand this, this algorithm. Of course, it won't be like, I mean, if you are new to mathematics, it will be much difficult, but with enough effort, we can learn. And this shows the good intention of the developers as well. They really want you to understand what is going on, right? And because like, I mean, after these developers, Bitcoin is going to be there forever. I mean, we want Bitcoin to succeed. Right? In order for Bitcoin to succeed, we need to be able to understand the code and maintain the code and whatnot, right? So we need to understand first, we have to teach our children and so on. This knowledge has to be generational. Generational wealth transfer alone is not enough. Generational knowledge transfer is also important. And they have taken great effort to help one understand this algorithm better. For the large part, this computation of modular inversion is is a, like the most computationally intensive task and there is a lot of effort was taken to make it like optimized and efficient okay and this also adds a lot to the code complexity right but anyway we have to make sure that bitcoin is like efficient secure optimized and so on anyway the algorithm goes like this okay so you want to find the gcd of two numbers as usual here they are using the variables f and g and this algorithm will only work if f is an odd integer, okay, at least one integer has to be odd. G could be either odd or even, doesn't matter. And this like fits perfectly with our problem because the prime number, the very large prime number that is used is odd. I mean, there is only one even prime number, which is two, right? So every other prime number is odd. So we have that prime number. We are one, we want to find, I mean, we know the GCD with uh, like any other number with that prime number is one, but in order for the modular inversion, we have to like do this uh, compute, compute the GCD and keep track of the internal variables to get the inversion, right? So we, we have to do this. It fits our problem perfectly. So this that's why the assertion, right? So I mean, F and one means the idea is that in uh, most of the programming languages supports like the bitwise operations. Okay. So this and one, it checks whether the last bit, so every integer bit, I mean, integer is a 256 bit, okay? Out of this 256 bit, whether the last bit is one or not. If the last bit is one, then it means the number is odd. If the last bit is zero, which means it's divisible by zero, and it's not odd. That's how the reasoning works. So that's why this check is done. And here this variable, which is called delta, right? I mean, why this delta variable is used? So this delta variable is used to find the bound of the number of iterations which is required for this algorithm. It is used in the theory to find the, the, the co to compute the coefficients and everything. Okay. It doesn't really, uh, I mean, it actually matters, but don't have to focus on this right now. So here, the, this while check, this looks very oddly familiar with the Euclidean algorithm where we check whether uh, that variable R is zero or not. Okay, so here similarly we are checking whether the, I mean, we are, we are going to continue iterating through this algorithm until this variable G becomes zero. Okay, once this variable G becomes zero, we can stop. So, yeah, so I mean, at every iteration we want the variable f to be odd, okay? So delta could be either zero or one, that's the idea. If it is one, I mean, in the first iteration, the delta is going to be one. We are updating f, I mean, we are updating delta to be zero because one minus one is zero, okay? And uh, we are shuffling f with g and we are updating g as g minus f divided by zero. So this double division stands for integer division in Python. For example, five integer division two will be two. That 0.5 decimal symbol will be ignored. Of course, four divided by two will be two, okay? So if delta is not one, in the sense if delta is zero and g is odd, this step is computed. 
So F is F is not changed. F is changed only when the delta is one. Okay. In all the other cases, F is not changed. And G, I mean, if G is an odd number, G is updated as G plus F divided by two. If G is zero, sorry, if G is an even number, we simply compute, the, I mean, we simply compute the division of G. So first question, why this algorithm works? Why at the end of this algorithm, this absolute value of F is the GCD? Okay, that is a question that we are trying to answer, right? The trick is that, okay, this is a ni ni neat mathematical trick. GCD of F comma G is actually equal to GCD of F comma G plus F divided by two. Okay, provided G and both, I mean, this is like case one. Okay, both F and G are odd. If both F and G are odd, G plus F will be an even number. So G plus F divided by two will be an odd number. Okay, so let's, I mean, let's just forget about the division by two for now, okay. This condition holds. It doesn't matter whether whether F is odd or even, okay. It, it doesn't really matter, right. So GCD of F comma G will always be equal to GCD of F comma G plus uh, G plus F. Why? If D divides both F and F, then F and G, then D divides F and D divides G plus F because we are assuming that D divides both F and G. And if there is any greater number than D that divides G plus F and F, then it means that greater number also divides G and F, right? Because that's what plus does, right? Which means that greater number will be the divisor of, I mean, will also divide F and G and hence kind of like, this is called like proof by contradiction. Okay, like, I'm just trying to be helpful here, okay? Similarly, GCD of F comma G, you can use the same argument to claim that this will be equal to, I mean, what is the formula? Yeah, GCD of G comma G minus F. So this both, both of these properties hold. Since at every step we are assuming that the variable F is odd, right? Here G is odd. So when we shuffle G with F, we can assume that F is odd, okay? Since at every step we are assuming that uh, F is odd, G, I mean, we don't, uh, we, I mean, if at the right, at this second term is even, if both F and G are odd, G minus F is even. If both F and G are odd, G plus F is also even. So in this case, when, when I mean, this case is G is even, okay? So this is G is even case. So the G, G is even case, we can simply divide that, uh, I mean, remove that factor two, because we know that that factor is not, it's not going to divide an odd number. So in all these cases, these terms, one, two, three, all these terms will be odd. So we can simply, we can, can safely like ignore that factor two. So why this algorithm works? Why this algorithm ends? In the Euclidean algorithm, there was a property that at every step, the remainder is strictly less than the divisor. So at the end, I mean, since we are working with positive integers, we can safely conclude that at the end we will uh, reach zero. Right. So here, why this algorithm works? Because at every step, G is cut into half. And that's why, simply. And when G becomes equals to F, G minus F will be, will be zero and we will terminate. That's uh, like, that's going to be the reasoning. Let me try to give you a visual understanding. Okay. So let's assume delta is equal to one, the first iteration. Okay. So we have this line. This is zero. Right. Let's assume that F is greater than G. So you are having this. Okay. So G minus F, what will be negative F? Negative F will be some number here. So G minus F is simply negative F plus G. So negative F plus G divided by two will be something here. Negative F plus G. I mean, I can simply write G minus F. Okay, and G minus F divided by two will be here. 
this will be the new f okay let me write it as f dash um, mistake so this will be the new g and the f is changed to g yeah f dash okay so this will be i mean g dash is the new g so f dash is the new f for the next iteration and of course for the next iteration delta is zero now there are two cases right so this g dash is either even or it is odd so i mean now the th the idea is that uh f is not changed f is changed only when delta is equal to one i mean and g is odd okay and g is odd so i mean let's assume that in the first iteration g is odd okay even if it is not odd you can work it out now there are two cases either g dash is g dash is even or g dash is odd if g dash is even it is cut into half okay g double dash either this could be the new g or g dash plus f dash divided by 2 so this could be the new g as you can see at every step g comes closer to f and if we repeat this enough okay we will come to i mean the algorithm will come to an end that is the intuition okay i'm not going to go into the theory it's like too big and it is not suitable for this kind of course where we are trying to understand the bip 340 okay it's not a purely purely math course i'm just trying to uh, give you the motivation and intuition for you to understand at a high level so that based on your interest and motivation and energy you can continue your own learning journey so this is the algorithm which was given and mentioned in the paper okay. so this algorithm promises constant time execution euclidean algorithm will reach to a zero and at every step we need to like divide by the remainder at one step the remainder will be zero when we are trying to divide by zero that is not allowed right so when you're in, in a computer just run a python program and try to divide a number by zero okay that that program is going to crash okay it actually doesn't make sense to keep continuing that and there is also like modular arithmetic you are trying to find the remainder of the prime with a smaller number and that is also not very efficient okay. there is this, this thing called a timing attack right which is side channel attacks if your algorithm like or a function okay behave differently for different inputs certain attacks are possible which can like successfully extract the keys for example if there is a malware uh, running in your computer which can monitor your uh, which can monitor the uh, the performance of other like applications okay so this could be a security threat right so if your algorithm is going to run for a run at a constant time this threat is mute and null and it is proven in the paper that this algorithm can be executed in a for loop right and as you can see we are not using any complex multiplication or division or something like that we are simply doing addition or subtraction and the division by 2 is essentially a left or oh sorry a right shift operation which is a constant time operation if you are dividing by some uh, dividing or finding remainder by some other bigger number that's not a constant time operation and we know that for our case this this is the prime which is used in the elliptic curve cryptography right in ssp 256k1 and this p it has 256 bits the first eight bits are all one sorry the first uh, how many bytes so we have this one two three four five six seven eight so eight times eight so each one is eight bits yeah for the first eight bits are all one okay it's not a gate i think yeah anyway the first bit is one that's that's my con that's my only concern concern so if you call f dot n bits this will give 256 so this algorithm will run at a constant time of 4 plus 3 times 256 is 600 plus 150 750 plus 
okay that will be 772 iterations and almost all of these operations are near constant time operations so this algorithm is immune to side channel attacks and of course i encourage you to start with this documentation and this paper to further enhance your knowledge and understanding of this topic and eventually the SACP 26K1 implementation in C programming language. All the best for your journey.